Okay, thank you, uh, the organizer, for inviting me to give a talk. It's a, a great honor for me to speak here. Uh, my title is Tensor Category uh, Arising from the Virasora Algebra. And uh, let me first uh, introduce uh, uh, the concepts. The first one. Uh, Maybe I should start from the definition of Virasora algebra. Virasora algebra is actually uh, the simplest uh, infinite dimensional Lie algebra. It's spanned by the generator Ln and uh, the central charge C. Uh, they should satisfy the following commutator relations. Ln, Lie bracket with Ln is m minus n times Ln plus n, plus m cubed minus m over 12, delta m plus n comma zero c and c commutes with all lms and uh, uh, the uh, the uh, the representation of uh, virasor algebra among them the most important one is the verman module it's actually uh, free U L minus module generated by the highest weight vector V C comma H satisfies that uh, L zero times V. Uh, here I should say V C comma H is H times V, and uh, C acts on V as scalar multiplication by C times V, and all positive n uh, annihilates V. So this is a typical uh, typical construction of uh, Lie algebra modules, and uh, every Verman module V of C comma H has a unique irreducible quotient, which is uh, denoted by L C comma H. It's just uh, V C comma H uh, divided by the maximal sub module. And uh, the, this uh, Verma module V C comma H is usually actually irreducible unless uh, uh, in this following case, it's reducible. So if we parameterize C by 13 minus 60 minus 60 inverse, and uh, when H equals R, Q, uh, R squared minus one over 40 minus RS minus one over two plus S squared minus one over four times T inverse. So when, only when H equals H, I denoted this, uh, this expression by HR comma S. Only when h equals h r comma s, uh, this v c comma h is reducible, and uh, for simplicity, I denote this v c v of c comma h r comma s by v sub r comma s, and uh, the simple one by l r comma s. They are uh, the interesting ones, and uh, uh. Actually, the representation of Virasora algebra is already studied by physicists in conformal field theory. Uh, in 1984, Belavin, Polyakov, Zamologikov, uh, they studied a minimal model. This is corresponding to T equals P over Q. Here, P, Q are co-prime and uh, P, Q are greater than or equal to four. So in this case, C is one minus six times P minus Q squared over P. Q and HR comma S is PR minus QS squared minus P minus Q squared over four PQ. And uh, there are some special cases, uh, some famous special cases. P equals two, Q equals five is called Yang Li model. And the P equals three, Q equals four is called Ishi model. And, and so, so many cases. So we can look at uh, uh, the definite, uh, we can look at a list in Koga and uh, Yurahori's uh, book. And uh, uh, when t equals one over p, p greater than or equal to two, it's called logarithmic models. It's studied by Gabriel and Kaus. And uh, uh, when t equals one, it's called degenerate minimal model or Gauss model. And when t is not rational, when t is not rational, some physicists studied some special case, which is called a parabolic model. And uh, this is uh, already not very well studied, and it's ab uh, it's absolutely <laughs> uh, there are there are actually no not studied at all uh, by physicists and uh, mathematicians when t is uh, minus p over q when p q are co prime, 
in the, uh, this is not studied in the literature. And uh, let me also introduce the definition of tensor categories. Uh, this might be already well known for, uh, for, for the audience, but uh, let me just uh, quickly go through the definition. So the tensor category consists of these six uh, ingredients, uh, a bailing category C, a tensor functor uh, from C times C to C, and associativity isomorphism A, and uh, the unit object, uh, left, uh, uh, left uh, uh, constraint, left unit constraint L, and uh, right unit constraint R. And uh, they should satisfy the following two axioms. Uh, one is uh, pentagon axioms. So if we have four objects, W, X, Y, Z, and uh, uh, multiply them, and uh, if we insert two, uh, two parentheses by Catalan number, there are five possible ways to insert parentheses and they should satisfy this commuting diagram. And uh, uh, the triangle axioms, which is uh, starting from x times one times y, and there are two ways to go to x times y. One is by right unit constraint times identity, we get x times y. The other is going through associativity and using left identity left unit constraint, we still get x times y, and this diagram should commute. And uh, usually we study braided tensor category. Uh, actually, braided tensor category uh, uh, appear pretty late after the definition of tensor category. And uh, before, braided, uh, before quantum group, people are mostly interested in symmetric tensor category. But uh, after quantum group, braided tensor category are uh, studied intensively afterwards. So the braiding is defined to be a fun uh, isomorphism, natural family of isomorphism, Cx comma y from x times y to y times x. And it should satisfy the following uh, hexagon axioms. So if we start from x times y times z, and uh, there are two, uh, sorry, we start from x times y parentheses times z, there are two ways to go to y times parentheses z times x, and this diagram should commute. And there are one more, starting from x times y times z. Uh, there are two ways to go to parentheses z times x times y. And uh, a braided tensor category is a tensor category equipped with such a braiding. And the rigidity is a very important property of uh, a braided, uh, of a tensor category. So it's, uh, uh, basically it means it has an uh, object uh, x star, and uh, satisfy this ix from unit to x times x star. This is called co-evaluation and uh, evaluation e sub x from x star times x to unit. And they should satisfy this composition. So let me explain the first one. So if we start from object x, if we apply the inverse of left unit constraint, we get one times x, that's an isomorphism. And then we use uh, co-evaluation from unit to x times x star, we get x times x star. And uh, the second term is, uh, is identity, just uh, preserves x. And then we use associativity isomorphism, we get x times x star times x. And uh, then we apply identity for the first term and evaluate the second two terms, we get x times y, or times unit. And then we apply the right unit constraint, we get x. And uh, if X is a simple object, uh, this should be just a scalar multiplication, right? And we require this uh, scalar multiplication is non-zero. And uh, if this condition is satisfied, we say this uh, uh, object uh, X is rigid. And if all the objects are rigid, we say this category is rigid. So why rigid is important? Uh, we can just uh, do a, a, an analog, a easy analog. So uh, tensor category looks like a monoidal. It has an uh, object, it has the multiplication, but it's not necessarily has the inverse. But uh, rigid category and uh, tensor category is the analog of uh, monoidal. And uh, uh, the best uh, tensor category is uh, modular tensor category. Modular tensor category might be most important for 
topologists and also for quantum topological quantum computation because it has a unit uh it's a it has a unit uh, functor so what is a modular tensor category so it satisfies these four basically four assumptions so first it should be semi simple and they should have a finite many inequivalent simple objects say x1 comma uh, uh, etc and uh, xr and it should be rigid. So rigid is a very important property for modular tensor category, and it has a, should has a ribbon twist. Sometimes we say it's a, uh, uh, yeah. It, sometimes we say it's a, uh, uh, yeah. It's a twist. It's actually a natural isomorphism theta x from x to x. It should satisfy this uh, equality. So if uh, theta x Theta is not a tensor functor, but they are different by this C x comma y composite with C y comma x, and the C x star equals uh, a theta x star equals theta sub x star, and uh, also non-degeneracy property. It means uh, this uh, C x i comma y j composite with uh, C x j comma x i. This is basically a uh, if we take trace, this is basically a R type, R times R square matrix, right? And uh, we are uh, if this square matrix is invertible, we say this category is uh, uh, non-degenerate. And uh, if all these conditions are satisfied, we say this tensor category is modular. And actually, nowadays, uh, if we are interested in infinite many infinite tensor categories, which means there are infinite many such simple object, there's also a way to define modularity. Basically, the, the only thing which cannot be defined is here. There's not necessarily R comma, R times R matrix, but we can uh, use the bilinear form to, uh, to, to, uh, to define degenerate. So it's still possible to define modularity. So for some experts, their modularity is a little bit different from my definition here. So I just use this as an example. Okay, so I think I finished uh, uh, the introduce the basic defini definitions. Let me also introduce the main problems we are studying. My motivation is study representations of uh, the Virasoro algebra. I want to see whether uh, Virasoro algebra representations representation category is semi-simple and uh, what, uh, what are the simple modules. If it's not semi-simple, how to extend uh, the simple modules by simple modules? And uh, also, what are the projective covers of the simple objects and so on? And uh, if, if there, uh, we know the representation category, we are also interested in whether there are Brady tensor category structure on representation categories of the Virasoro algebra. And once we have Brady tensor category, we want to find out the fusion products of the, for example, simple objects and the fusion products among simple and projective. And we also need to prove nice properties on this Brady tensor category, such as rigidity and modularity. And uh, after we studied this uh, Brady tensor category very well, we want to connect this Brady tensor category from the quantum group uh, tensor categories, which is uh, more obvious. And uh, this is called a uh, custom lucidity correspondence. So these are the main problems uh, we are studying recently. Okay, uh, the idea is to use uh, Huang Laposki Zhang's uh, tensor category theory for vertex operator algebras. Here, I don't want to go deep to the vertex operator algebra, but I want to explain how to, because here the motivation is to study representation of Virasoro algebra, right? how to uh, use vertex operator algebra to study this category. The idea is for each Virasoro algebra, we can construct a vertex operator algebra. And uh, the definition is uh, we start from Verma module, Vc comma zero. Here means it means AR zero acts on this uh, highest weight vector by zero. And uh, this Vc comma zero has the obvious simple objects, which is L minus one times Vc comma zero. This is an obvious singular vector. So we use Vc comma zero to modular out this uh, sub module generated by this obvious singular vector. We denote this, uh, uh, this module by Mc comma zero. And uh, it also has a irreducible quotient L C comma zero. 
both MC comma zero and LC comma zero has vertex operand algebra structure. Most importantly, representation of this MC zero VOA module, vertex operand algebra module, is uh, the same as the Virasoro algebra LC L modules with uh, central charge C with a fixed central charge. And uh, obviously, we know this Verma module and irreducible quotient are the modules for MC zero. And uh, for vertex opera algebra, there is a very important concept called C2 cofinite. C2 cofinite is. And uh, what is uh, C2 cofinite VOA? It means LC, zero modular out uh, subspace uh, C2 of LC0, which is spanned by all this L minus NV. Here, N should be greater than or equal to 3. This subspace should, should be finite dimensional. So uh, obviously MC comma zero is not C2 because you can see M, uh, here VC comma zero is spanned by all possible L minus N, N greater than or equal to one. If we modulo out uh, N greater than or equal to three, it can have uh, L minus two to an arbitrary power acts on the vacuum vector, right? So, so MC comma zero is obviously not C2 cofinite. Uh, but LC comma zero is possible to be C2 cofinite because they might have a singular vector. And the singular vector might restrict the L minus two to some to certain finite finite powers. So uh, this is a very important concept for vertex opera algebra. And actually Wei Chang Wang in 1993. He proved that the vertex opera algebra LC0, when T equals P over Q, P, Q greater than or equal to two, this is rational. So in his paper, he defined the rational to be the category of LC0 module is semi-simple. Here module means ungreatable weak module. I don't want to go deep to this definition, but it's certain kind of module. It's uh, pretty, uh, uh, it's ungreatable which means uh, it should have a natural number grading. And uh, uh, it's a weak module means there are no other assumptions. And uh, there should have only finite many simple objects, L, R, comma, S. Here, uh, L, R, comma, S is defined at the beginning of my talk. R is uh, from one to Q minus one. S is from one to P minus one. So in total, there are P minus one times Q minus one uh, simple objects. So this category is pretty simple, right? It's uh, it's basically a direct sum of this L R comma S, and uh, Don Lee Mason proved that L C comma zero is indeed a C two cofinite based on the singular vectors because L C comma zero when T equals P over Q it has a singular vector starting from L minus uh, two to certain powers. So there are only finite many possible L minus two powers. So it's indeed a C2 cofinite. And this category, this kind of category is very, VUA is very nice. Huang proved a general theorem. If a VUA is rational in this sense, and is C2 cofinite, then the category of V modules is indeed a, even better is a modular tensor category. So in particular for this Virasoro algebra at uh, level T equals P over Q, the the category, this finite category is a modular tensor category. And a, a natural question is when T is not P over Q, the, the other case, unfortunately in this case, LC comma zero is, is just uh, this MC comma zero, is almost as a Verman module. So this is not rational and also not C2. And we still want to, uh, we, we, we are still very curious whether this uh, uh, category is uh, is uh, has a braided tensor structure, and uh, if it indeed has a braided tensor category structure, we want to ask uh, whether this is rigid or even better modular. And uh, since uh, the category is not uh, semi simple, right? So uh, in representation theory, if a category is not semi simple, we would uh, study finite lens modules. So finite lens means uh, there is a finite filtration. Uh, composite uh, finite uh, uh, 
finite uh, series such that uh, wi over wi minus one are irreducible modules of this form lc h r comma s for positive for integers r comma s and uh, this finite lens is uh, has very good uh, representation theory property it's uh, close under direct taking direct sum taking sub modules taking quotient and taking control gradient duals however we cannot show that uh, finite lens category is closed under taking tensor product. Uh, here we say fusion product to distinguish uh, the tensor product from your Lie algebra fusion uh, tensor product. We, we call fusion products. And uh, also in Huang Laposi Zhang's tensor category theory, uh, when they prove uh, iso uh, associate, associativity isomorphism, they require a property called convergence and extension property. This is also not obvious for finite lens modules. So there are some uh, technical difficulties here if we use finite lens category. And then we turn to another module category, which is special for vertex operator algebra. It's called C1 cofinite. C1 cofinite definition is very similar to C2. It has a, it has similar flavor of C2 cofinite. And uh, what's the, the definition? The definition is uh, if we quotient out the module W by C1 of W, C1 space is uh, defined to be span of L minus N W. W is arbitrary element in W and N is greater than or equal to two. So you can imagine for highest weight vectors, the highest weight modules, the only remaining possible vector inside W over C1, W is L minus one to certain power, right? So in general, it's still not finite lens of a C1 cofinite. But uh, if W has some singular vector, it might make it uh, C1 cofinite. And uh, actually this C1 cofinite module has very good uh, tensor category property. Miyamoto first showed that the category of lower bounded C1 cofinite module is actually closed under taking fusion product. So it's, uh, it actually, uh, it actually uh, makes up the disadvantage of uh, finite lens modules. And Huang already proved that the category of C1 cofinite modules satisfy the convergence and extension property. Basically, it should uh, the four-point function satisfy a differential equation. And uh, unfortunately, this uh, C1 cofinite module is not closed under taking some modules and also not close under taking control gradient modules. So if we use finite lens module, it has some difficulty. If we use C1 cofinite module, it also has some, some uh, difficulty. But uh, when in 19, uh, actually in 2019, when I visit uh, Anton Milas, uh, he privately talked to me, he suspect that these two categories are the same. The C1 cofinite module and finite lens module are the same. Actually, this is a pretty wild conjecture. A lot of our peers do not agree. And then we show that uh, it's actually true for Virasora algebra, MC0 module. The category of finite lens module, which I denoted by OC finite with a fixed central charge C is the same as the category of grading restricted C1 cofinite module. And once these two categories are the same, you can see we can take advantage of both categories Actually, for example, finite lens category is is has is a Bailey category, and uh, C one cofinite categories is uh, close under fusion, and uh, it's uh, satisfy uh, associativity axioms, and then we can show that uh, the category of finite lens module in this case is also the category of C one cofinite module. It has a Brady tensor category, and uh, for vertex opera algebra, it has a free ribbon twist. It's just uh, very simple. It's e to the two pi i times Virasora L zero operator. So uh, in this case, we proved that for arbitrary central charge, it's not only for the uh, p over q, p q greater than or equal to two. And uh, this is actually very nice. So we proved that there exists a Brady tensor category for the representation category of the Virasora algebra. Okay, and then we want to study the detailed structure. And uh, actually, the, even if it's a Virasora algebra, the detailed structure is not easy. We started from T is not rational. 
physicists already believed uh, this category is semi-simple and uh, it has uh, infinite many simple objects, LR comma S, RS are uh, all non uh, positive integers. So there are infinite many such things. And I, even if physicists believe it's semi-simple, we the proof of this category is semi-simple, we have to use this uh, the first uh, the first result of this theorem. And then we computed a fusion products, LR comma one times LR prime comma one is L L comma one. L starts from the absolute value of uh, the difference of R and R prime plus one to, until R plus R prime minus one. You can see this fusion rule looks like SAR2 uh, Clabber's Gordon formula, right? So in fact, it's uh, uh, it's uh, it's indeed this uh, category spanned by LR comma one generated by LR comma one is indeed the same as SAR two uh, tensor category. And uh, the non-trivial thing is LR comma one times L one comma s. So they actually is LR comma S. So it looks like uh, the left category, sometimes we call this left category of Virasora LR comma one, and L one comma S, the right category. It looks like they're shaking, they shake hands and uh, we get the whole thing LR comma S. Here I didn't write uh, the fusion rules of L one comma S times L one comma S prime. It's actually similar to this case. And uh, we actually show that uh, the subcategory generated by LR comma one is braided equivalent to the category of finite lens module for alpha in SCR2 at uh, level T, at level T here. And uh, this second category is studied by Kastan Lustig in 1994. And uh, this is actually a special case of a conjecture of Aganganik, Franco, or Konkov. They conjecture that uh, the W algebra category is the same as uh, a certain subcategory of W algebra modules is the same as uh, the category of uh, affine algebra modules. And uh, this is the case of T is not, uh, uh, not Q. And then once we have this fusion rule, once we know this is the same as Kastanlustic affine category, and we get a rigidity and a non-degeneracy for free, almost for free, the most important thing is rigid. Because here it's even the same as SAR2, right? So it's rigid. Okay, so this is the case T is not a rational number. And uh, another interesting case is T equals one over P. This might be the most interesting case because this category is not semi-simple. The simple object is quite, uh, 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 is quite obvious. Uh, I, I think it's quite well known, I should not say obvious. So it's uh, labeled by R comma S, R is, uh, greater than or equal to one, all these positive integers. And uh, S is finite, is from one to P. And uh, the fusion rule of the left category is almost identical to the previous case. It's uh, the same as SAR2. And actually the subcategory generated by LR comma one is braided equivalent to alpha in SAR2 at the level minus two plus one over P. And it's equivalent to Lie group SU2 representation. But uh, the the associativity isomorphism should be modified by abelian three co-cycle on z over two z. This is proved in Drazen, uh, Thomas, and uh, Naoki, and my results. And uh, so it's uh, it's uh, consequently l r comma one are rigid. Here the most uh, difficult part is l one comma s, and uh, actually we want to study this L1 comma S, the fusion rule is not uh, as simple as this one. And uh, to study the fusion rules of L1 comma S, we need to know rigidity of rigidity of LR comma S first. So let me record the definition of rigid, which I have uh, uh, discussed uh, maybe 10 minutes ago. So starting from X, there is a way to get uh, X by composite uh, this, these uh, uh, functors, we need to actually show this f sub x is non-zero if x is a simple object. Here I should say uh, for a simple object. Okay, and actually when x equals uh, l one comma two, so here in this composition, the most difficult one is this associativity isomorphism here, this one. And actually this one corresponding to, uh, to the four point function. So this corresponding to iterates uh, four point function. This corresponding to products iterate function. And actually this uh, uh, 
this for these two different four point functions are all given by this hypergeometric differential equation. This is uh, by this is called by uh, BPZ equation. It's uh, Belavin Polyak ophthalmological, named after these uh, three pioneers. And uh, this is actually a hypergeometric differential equation. Uh, the iterate corresponding to the singularity around the x equals. Uh, zero and this corresponding to the singularity ar around x equals to one and uh, in the common area they have a connection formula and uh, the connection formula if we give the explicit uh, associ associativity isomorphism and once we know explicit associativity isomorphism we can compute this fx directly actually in this case is minus p o uh, p minus two over cosine pi over p when p is greater than or equal to three and when p is two, you can see this expression does not make sense, but uh, there is a certain limit. It's, uh, this is a calculus one limit is minus uh, four over pi. And uh, in particular, these effects are all non-zero. So L1 comma two is rigid. So this is a typical way for us to prove rigidity by solving differential equation. It's, uh, it's successful for this uh, lower rank case, but for high rank, we still need to find some other way to, to prove rigidity. So I would say rigidity is the most uh, difficult part of our results. Okay, and once we know rigidity, we can compute uh, the fusion product of L1 comma two with all the other simple objects. And uh, it turns out uh, L1 comma two times L comma S. When S equals one, it's L R comma two. So in general, there are still such shaking hands fusion products. LR comma one times L one comma S is LR comma S. But uh, the the div the the interesting thing here is L one comma two times LR comma P. So remember S is from one to P, right? So when S equals to P, there's a new fusion, uh, the new module coming out. So P, I denoted by P R comma P minus one. This is actually a projective cover of simple objects in L R of L R comma P minus one. But it's not in the category of finite lens module, it's in a subcategory of uh, generated by simple objects L one comma two. So it's uh, actually uh, the right, almost the right category, but uh, here the right category is not semi-simple. So I would say it's generated by L one comma two. Okay, so there are some non-trivial module coming out, but uh, this uh, uh, this module is a projective module. It's projective cover of uh, uh, L R comma P minus one. But that makes our uh, construction of projective cover very easy using our tensor product. So tensor product functor has some application even in representation theory. The one of them is it's easier to construct a projective modules. So here, let's start from the projective cover of L R comma P. This simple object is projective by itself. So it means L R comma P is just a P R comma P. And then we already show that P R comma P minus one is just L one comma two times L R comma P. We can actually do this uh, iteratively. We use L one comma two times P one comma S, and then we get the direct sum of these projective covers. So in this way, we can construct uh, projective covers iteratively. And uh, we also know Lorry diagram of the projective covers. For P1 comma S, the soccer is uh, L1 comma S, and the top is also where L1 comma S. And uh, there's uh, intermediate uh, simple objects L2 comma P minus S. And a projective cover of the general PR comma S is a di it looks like a diamond. The top is P R comma S. The bot the soccer is also P L R comma S. And the intermediate, there are two simple objects, L R minus one comma P minus S and L plus one P comma S. And in general, the fusing rule is uh, uh is quite uh, complicated. L R comma S times L R prime comma S prime. So it's a direct sum of simples plus the plus the projective covers of the simples. And uh, uh, I want to also say a, a remarkable result of Gannon and uh, Chris Negron, Terry Gannon and uh, Chris Negron. They show that uh, this uh, uh, subcategory of our Virasora OZ 
finite is uh, equivalent to the category of quantum group weight modules UQSL2. This is a conjecture raised uh, by uh, conformal field theorists uh, uh, maybe a while ago. Uh, so this, these categories are uh, equivalent as human categories. Okay, uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, future work we are planning to do regarding Mirasora categories. So the other missing uh, test added is when t equals p over q, p q greater than or equal to two. If you remember, if uh, if you remember, if uh, uh, if it's uh, simple LC comma zero, it's which one wants rational. Uh, result, right? But uh, when C, uh, if we study MC0, that's quite different. And this category is not rigid, obviously. And uh, uh, my academic, uh, uh, my collaborator, Robert McGree, and his student is studying this uh, tensor category. And it's uh, actually, it turns out to be very uh, complicated. And uh, the other tensor structure we are studying is T equals minus P over Q. In this case, LC comma zero is the same as MC comma zero. And as I said before, this is not very well studied. And uh, uh, there are certain dualities, uh, CT zero and LC uh, minus T zero. And uh, duality means there are some pretty reverse equivalent among these representation categories. When T is not Q, uh, it's studied by Frank Sikas, and uh, also Franco Minxian Zhu. And uh, Robert and uh, Robert McGree and myself study the case t equals one because we are able to study t equals minus one, the tensor category. And we are also interested in generalized Virasora results to super Virasora n equals one and n equals two. And uh, for n equals one, the tensor structure results uh, are almost the same as Virasora, but rigidity is more complicated. And uh, it's also very interesting to study higher rank uh, W algebras. So Virasora is uh, rank one uh, rank, rank one W algebra, but uh, there are many more W algebras. And uh, we can also use our Virasora result to study ex extensions using extension theory. And uh, we have successfully studied singlet algebra using uh, Biasora algebra and also this triplet algebra, which is cofinite. And uh, uh, that's all for my talk. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Let's thank our speaker. Okay. Thank you very much for your nice talk. Is there any comment or question? Uh, Hajar, please check the chat as well. Oh, okay. I, ha uh, I have a question. Okay, please. Okay. Hi, Tingwei. Uh, I want to ask uh, uh, if uh, about uh, the uh, the F1 vertex algebra, there is also uh, the similar problem on the tensor structure on the representation category of uh, F1 Lie algebra. Yeah, uh, for F1 Lie algebra, there are parallel stories. So for we also we also study tensor category according to the level k, and uh, when k plus uh, h check k plus dual coex number is not rational, this is. Uh, not positive rational. This is studied by the remarkable breakthrough by Castan Lustig. And uh, when K plus H check is positive rational numbers, there are there are still many more to do. Uh, for the miserable Thomas Crodic uh, Huang and myself did something, and uh, there are also collapsing level studied by Drazen before, and we used their result to construct tensor category. But there are many more, many more so, to study. Uh, okay, uh, so. Uh... The uh the category of uh, the finite lens uh, uh, for this uh, Versoro uh algebra you mentioned in your talk if there is a uh, if there is a corresponding uh category for the alpha vertex algebra if it is uh, uh corresponded to the level to be the admissible level or yeah yes uh, you are right. So 
when uh yeah that's a very very interesting question so if uh, if here t plus 2 if here t plus 2 is uh, not positive rational it's uh, i i think uh, so here uh if uh, this is one of the coordinates you may, uh you, you are asking when minus one over when t plus one over p and when t is uh, not rational there is also equivalence and uh, when t plus two is uh is uh, admissible uh let me think whether whether we have done that i think we haven't done that yeah, that's a very interesting question. When p plus two is not pure q, uh, is p. If there is some connection problem. Okay. Yes, seems so. You should unmute. I can't hear. Can you hear me? Oh, sorry, sorry. It's automatically mute. Uh, I'm automatically muted. So uh, I think uh, this admissible level correspondence might, we, uh, I think uh, we might not, haven't written down, I think. Uh, yeah, this is not written down when t is uh, p over q, p greater than or equal to two. This is uh, admissible. Yeah, the it's not written down. The problem for uh, I find that you you uh, this casual usage is too small. You should go to yes. high category or relaxed category, even Whitaker categories. So. Yeah. If the fusion product the, has the, been that's the Another, what, what Jordan just said is another research people are doing. They are trying to extend the category because the category I mentioned is very small. Even we are so algebra, finite length module category is very small. It does not include even Verman modules. That's, uh, that's uh, a lot of people want, uh, <laughs> a, a topic a lot of people want to study and it's very difficult. I think recently Tomoyuki, uh, Kazuya Thomas only did SAR2. They are now. The category to weighted modules, SAR2. Weighted module. Okay. But the paper is not showing up yet. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, is there any question or more comments? Okay, uh, let me check the chats as well. Okay, if there is no any question, let's thank our speaker again.